Praise the Lord, saints. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Dig right on in. The funny thing was, was last Sunday. You know, I'm, I, um, the Lord has had me numbering uh, the messages ever since we started. Um, shortly after we started, uh, I started numbering the messages. Well, last Sunday was the 365th message. Mm. Which was a trip because it's almost the end of the year, right? Mm -hmm. So today is 366 message. And I went to look and see. I had to check something on the videos. And there's over 500 something YouTube videos. Yes. And I'm like, we've been putting in some work. Well, let me back that up. I've been putting this. Yeah. <laughs> and there's another gentleman. I can't think of what his name. Um, but I happened to cross paths with him a while ago. And a lot of the things that he taught on, I was teaching on. And we were crisscrossing in certain things. Well, unfortunately, he passed away. And so now, they're pulling up old videos of him. And these people are commenting, how come nobody else is teaching like this? Mm -hmm. huh? And I just be laughing every time I see this. And last night, I started seeing a lot of you guys sharing come out for watch night. Amen. Amen. It's time we start sharing the word of God. Amen. I was telling somebody, you know, we real good about promoting other people's uh, information and clips. Does it ever occur to you? Is there something that hits you in this house and it impacted you? What do they call it? Screen clipping or whatever? Screenshot? Screenshot. Screenshot. And what was clipping? Clip. To, to clip the video and yeah. upload it. I know uh, where's Shania? She ain't here. Oh, there she goes. Shania does it. Yes. Uh, 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 Tanya be uploading stuff. There's a few of y'all that do it. Start tagging and, and sharing this stuff. You don't understand. God is going to ask you, what did you do with all that information you were given? Are you just sitting there on your hands with it? Do you understand? That's why you get the information. We are all disciples. Just because you don't get up on this pulpit, you still got a mouth. You're still a child of the King of Kings. And he's going to ask you, how come you never shared my story? How come you never extended the olive branch to somebody who you knew was addicted to drugs. Who you knew. Chris, I want to thank God for her obedience because Erin would not be here if she didn't extend that branch. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Amen. And Sarah, Amen. Her, Renee, her mother would have never come up in here. Her mother came here and for the last year of her life, she lived filled, sanctified with the Holy Spirit. But she didn't die a sinner. Am I right? How long was she out there in the world? Her whole life. 60-some years. And the last year of her life, they were going to cut that woman's leg off, y'all. She came, and, and, and it was, this, was, this was fun, not like ha-ha, but ironic. When I say funny, it was ironic. She came, and she got ready to leave, and I said, wait, 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 uh-uh, you ain't getting up out of here that quick. Let me pray for you, because I might not ever see you again. This is what I'm thinking in my, my heart. And I prayed for her, I asked her, is it okay? She said, yeah, but she didn't want to come up here at the first time. You remember that, or was you here? And she fell out in the parking lot. I had left. No, she wasn't. I went to pray for that lady. The power of God hit her so hot. She went, 
in the middle of the parking lot. She was out for at least five minutes. And five minutes is a long time to be on the ground. When the when her ride came, he pulled up in the van. He was like, do I need to call 911? I said, no, nah, baby, because she's with the surgeon. She's being operated on. When she came out of it, she looked at me and I said, your leg is healed. <coughs> She came back, what, the next week or two later, they were going to cut, was it her leg or her foot? Her leg, right? It was her leg. One of her legs, there was something really wrong with it. And she told me they were gonna cut her leg off. She came back and she said, the doctor said it's healing from the inside out. Great job. And I'm like, wow, she got COVID. She tried to get back out, caught COVID, came back. Thanksgiving time, we never closed the church. Mm. I said, now why you didn't tell me? Let's pray. She started smelling. We been, who was here that day? Time. She still didn't have no, she hadn't she had no, taste. no smell or no taste. Yeah. And For we months. prayed. Like and she was like, oh my God, I can smell again. I can taste again. She passed away happy. Everything the devil took from her, God restored it. You know why? Because of her, her daughter's obedience. Amen. So I'm, I'm talking to folk. See, we think we just doing us. God is saying, no, you're doing more than doing you. And if you're not doing more than you're doing you, then you need to reevaluate what you're really doing. Let's go to um, 2 Timothy, chapter 3. Hmm. Y'all ready? 2 Timothy, chapter 3. And I'm reading New King James, and the subtitle is Perilous times and perilous men. Wow. Now, to respect of the reading of the word, if you physically able, rest into your feet. Y'all ready? Amen. But know this that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And from such people, <coughs> turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres resisted Moses, so do all these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith, but they will progress no further for their folly will be manifest to all as theirs also was. This is the reading of the word. Father God, I come before your throne of grace, and I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have allowed me to be your mouthpiece in these last days, these end days. Father, I pray that the Shekinah glory will saturate this sanctuary. 
Shift the atmosphere of anything that is not from you, for you, or of you. Father, I call on a legion of angels. Dispatch them from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Warring, protective, healing, and ministering. Father, let them wield their swords today, cutting off the heads of everything and anything that does not belong to you. Father, we go out of 2023 and into 2024 understanding that we are the head and not the tail. Father, we come against witches and warlocks, dust blowers and soothsayers, sorcerers and demonic spirits, principalities and rulers of darkness, chiefs, principal of, of, of princes of hell. They have no authority over the kingdom of God. Every demon will tremble and flee. Surround this house with the ring of your holy fire. Put a dome of protection over this place. And everyone, under the sound of my voice, those that are watching on live, as well as in this house, Father, we ask that you open up our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears. Allow us, Holy Spirit, to have a supernatural encounter with you today. We ask that you put the blood of the Lamb over the doorposts of this house, in our homes, over our hearts, over our heads, and over our lips. Father, we ask that you put your watchmen at the front door and the back door. Father, we ask that you will keep us from being misled, misdirected, and continuing to listen to the lies of the enemy. Today, we rebuke the plans and plots and ploys of everything that exalts itself against the kingdom of God. Father, we bless you, we honor you, and we invite you into this place. Father, I ask that you will allow me to be your vessel. I decrease that you may increase. Allow me to dissect these words, that we can digest them, and we can go out into the world and produce fruit for the kingdom of God. And I say these things humbly, Lord, I give you all glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen and amen. 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 All right. The title of this message is The Countdown. The Countdown. Huh? First verse, 2 Timothy chapter 3, tells us, But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal, Despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. I think we hit the jackpot, don't you? <laughs> yeah? We the air saints? Did we miss anything? Did, did the Apostle Paul miss speak? How come we don't want to believe this, this book? Because everything that this book, this book has written has come to fruition. Hmm? Everything that this book has written thousands of, thousands of years ago. So beloved men and women of God, we must not end 2023 with a false sense of a promise with this upcoming turn of events. As the clock strikes 
midnight tonight. You know, there's an air of excitement, like something new is about to happen, right? Yeah. It's a new year, new beginnings, new start, right? And for the first four or five days of the new year, we be on point, on fire, excited, expecting new things to happen, am I right? Anybody ever go on a New Year resolution? Oh, I'm going to lose weight this year. <laughs> and you start those first three or four days doing what you said you was going to do. And by the next week, you didn't slip back into doing what you used to do. There's some kind of study that says, I believe, if, in order to break a habit, you got to at least do it for two, 21 plus days. Huh? You got to do it for 21 plus days. All right? So tonight, as the season is going to shift before our very eyes, I need you to understand that we are going to bear witness, right? That there is a real shift happening not just in the physical but in the spiritual realm here she goes so we have to bear witness that this is not the timing that God really created uh oh put your seatbelts on <laughs> Huh? January 1st, 12 o'clock, midnight, ball drop. Happy New Year! That's not the timing God created. Y'all know that? So, unfortunately, like all the things that God created, the enemy has twisted and manipulated, right? Did he pick my pen up? Oh, no, I got it. I need it. Um, Drop it. Uh, so it's been, it's been twisted and manipulated, right? So why was it twisted and manipulated? Because it was a tool to deceive God's people, pulling them further, 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 further away from God's truth. Now, think about anybody in here over 50, and you had your grandparents, not your parents, but your grandparents. Were they not grounded and rooted in God? Raise your hand if they were. It was almost unheard of that they didn't have a relationship with God. Now, when they're children came along that's when things started falling off mm -hmm. am i right mm -hmm. see the, the enemy had this plan that i'm going to start pushing divorce remember i was talking about the um, honeymooners and how that guy was he was such a narcissistic creep mm -hmm. and it was planting seeds mm -hmm. to treat your wife bad and every every episode we can break up, break up to make up, right? And so what it was doing was planting seeds that it's okay to get divorced. The whole thing behind Hollywood is that it was used as a tool to control God's people, to destroy God's people, to break families up, to put seeds, plant seeds so okay let's talk about the 80s when the crack era hit what young black man do you know went to Colombia went to Nicaragua to go get cocaine huh went to China to go get heroin huh what what to 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 Vietnam to go to those foreign countries what young, black, or brown 
man or woman do you know own jets to be able to go pick that stuff up and bring it to the United States? How about AK-47s and machine guns and assault rifles and all this stuff? You guys, it was a plot. It was a plant. It was an agenda. And it has worked like a charm. Let's put them in an environment where kill or be killed. Let's pump them with music and entertainment that only shows stardom. The only way, you ask a young person 10 years ago, what do you want to be when they grow up? What was the answer? Or a a athlete or a rapper? Yeah. That was it? How many rappers and athletes do you think the industry can accommodate? Because <laughs> it ain't that many that's going to make it to the top. Do you all understand what I'm saying? So for that many young people's minds to be consumed with, I want to be a rapper or I want to be an athlete tells you that we have had a problem for a very, very long time. And when they can't achieve that goal, the next thing they turn to is drugs. Then they turn to drugs, and then what do they do? Now they end up in prison. Who owns the music industry? The same folks that own the prisons. So they're making money going in and coming out. It was a plot. It was a plan. It was purposely designed to steal, kill, and destroy God's people. Pulling them away. Pulling them further. So this goes back many, many, many years, y'all. So let me give you a little bit of backdrop. I want to give you a little history about where New Year's and New Year's resolutions began. Amen? Amen. From the Babylonians. Anybody ever heard of the Babylonians? <laughs> they resolved to return borrowed farm equipment to the medieval kings. And they would go and they would re renew their vow. So New Year's, when the New Year started, right, we owe you. But we're we making a pact, we're going we gonna to give it back to you. I'm making a promise. I borrowed your equipment, but I promise I'll bring it back. Okay? 2000 B.C. Listen, y'all. 2000 years before Christ. So that is now... 2,000 years before, we're in 2020. That's 4,024 years ago. Y'all with me? The Babylonians celebrated New Year during a 12-day festival called Akitu. And it was with the vernal equinox. I don't want to get all off into that. But... If you're interested, write it down and look into it, okay? They, they understood that things happened by seasons. And they started farming season to plant crops, right? And this is when they would, they would, they would plant their crops, they would crown a new king, and they would make all these promises uh, to uh, do certain things throughout the year. Right? And they, 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 it, it was almost like uh, uh, an excuse, right? So it was understanding that we're at the beginning of a new season. We're at the beginning of planting new crops, right? We're at the beginning of uh, 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 a new person to reign over our uh, 
community. Y'all with me? All right. And if they borrowed something, this was the time that they would make agreements that they would return it at a certain time. But timing shifted. See, they were on the time that God created back then. But timing shifted. Somebody say shifted. 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 How many of you feel like your life has shifted in the last year? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes? No? A yes. little bit? A lot? What? So they shifted the time by adopting the Julian calendar. So now this is 46 BC. This is 46 years before Jesus came, right? Which they started declaring January 1st as the start of a new year. All right? The reason that they decided they're going to use January 1st is because they wanted to honor by using the name January. Anybody know what that name means? It's a, is it a god or something? Yes, ma'am. It is a two-faced Roman god. Janus. J-A-N-U-S. And this god looks forward to new beginnings, but also looks uh, backward for reflection and resolution. And the Romans would offer sacrifices to Janus and make promises of good behavior for the year ahead. Mm. See, everything we do is based on us honoring other deities. Mm -hmm. And we don't even understand it. We just do it without questioning, without understanding where did this start at? You know what's interesting? I never would go out on New Year's. Never would go out on New Year's. I went out a few times, but I, it was never this thing for me, right? Concerts. I never wanted to go to concerts. There were certain things that just, they didn't sit right in my, sit, my spirit. I didn't understand it, but they just did not sit right. Now I understand, right? So... This is going to blow your minds. Janus was also the guardian, ready, of gates and doors. Wow. Gates and doors? Gates and doors to what? Huh? He presided over the temple of peace where the doors were open only during wartime. Wait, so you sit over the doors of peace only during wartime. It was a place of safety where new beginnings and new resolutions could be forged. Huh. So, if you think about this, the way they set it up, the, the timing of early January makes sense for a lot of European and North Americans because the active harvest season has passed and the holiday frenzy has ended. All right? Now, I want you to understand, we went from the Julian calendar to moving into the Gregorian calendar, which we use today. We've talked about this many, many, many times. So in 45 BC, all right, New Year's Day was celebrated January 1st, which we just talked about, in the history when the Julian calendar took effect. Thank you to Julius Caesar reforming them. The Gregorian calendar was introduced in 1582. Somebody do the math. 2023 1582. So how many years ago was this? By Pope Gregory 13. 
to correct some slight inaccuracies, but continues to start the year in January. Okay? Now, how many? 421. So for not that long of a time, right? So from 2023 to 1582, right? Now, there was a, a poet, Longfellow. He said, I count as God of avenues and gates the years that through my portals come and go. These people understand what they're doing. They understand that these windows of time create certain events in the space, in the atmosphere, and those that truly have learned to let God teach you and uh, 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 show you you can't help but see what you see and know what you know. So we've discussed the winter solstice. Are we kind of clear about that? That is the shortest day of the year, right? But the longest day, the longest night of the year. That happens twice a year. Then in somewhere in, the, in June or July, I forgot when, I think it's in June. Then you have the shortest night and the longest day spring equinox or whatever it's called something like that right now during winter solstice is when i got my butt whooped i was in a war a battle and it was not okay and i didn't understand the complexity of what was happening but you got to understand there were things that God has prophesied that these ancient demons were going to be released on the earth for the end times. We know about that because scripture confirms it. They are opening up portals. They are opening up doors. They are transitioning people. To dabble in stuff. So the winter solstice, you ready for this? Was originally thought to be on December 25th. <laughs> they changed it by a couple of days. Wow. <laughs> oh, y'all y'all been y'all been paying attention, I see. And then the new year would start the first of the next month, January. So the Romans consecrated this day to Janus. And they would exchange good wishes and gifts of sweet figs and honey in Janice's honor. Now, Chinese New Year starts usually uh, sometime in January or early February, right? Jewish New Year is based on a lunar calendar and it does not start until September, which was the original time frame. Huh? The Islamic New, a new Year, also known as the first of Muharram, is observed in July or August, and it is based on the sighting of the thin crescent moon. Hmm. Interesting. 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 Don't you think? Don't you think? Well, I'm about to blow your minds a little bit further. Was anybody paying attention last uh, Sunday when we talked about the birth of Jesus Christ? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh? And we talked about the, the, the shepherds in the field and how there would be no way on God's green earth that them men could have been out there in the middle of December. <laughs> they men could not have been out there, right? It was too cold. But what happened was the harvest season was over. And so they would ask the farmers, can we bring our sheep to graze down your land? So they would each be doing each other a favor. The sheep would come and graze down the land and prepare it for the next season for when they were going to replant. Y'all with me? So 
we know that according to a second event, which was the star appearing, there were Chinese astronomers and the wise men who studied the stars. Now you gotta remember, the enemy took astrology to manipulate it into something he wanted to use it for, right? But this is how they would tell the seasons. By the moon, snap out of it. In the name of Jesus, right? So guess what? They saw, Chinese people saw, and the other people saw, there was an event that took place in the sky and they pinpointed it to September 11, 3 BC. Okay? So this is how they have concluded that this was the actual date of Jesus' birth. Now, let's go into something that's really going to blow your mind, and I've taught on this. The Ethiopian calendar. They are seven years behind us. See, Satan thinks he's slick. If I change the timing, if I get everybody off the of balance, if I can control certain things, then I can be sure that none of these people wake up and worship the true God. So I'm going to keep them under confusion. I'm going to keep them under delusion. So the Ethiopian calendar is 2016 right now. They use the original lunar timetable. There are 13 months, not 12. Understand? Ethiopian calendar has 13 months in a year. The first 12 Ethiopian months have 30 days each. You notice February got how many days? 28. 28 days. Some of them got 30. Some of them got 31. They just did what they wanted to do with that calendar. Okay? Only the 13th month has five or six days in it. But there are 13 months. Because they go by the moon. All right? The 13th month is called Pagumi in Amaric. When an Ethiopian year is not a leap year, the 13th month, Pagumi, will have five days. That's why it's either five or six. Once every four years, the Ethiopian calendar will have a leap year, hence the 13th month. Pagumi will have six days in that year. So, as an example, the Ethiopian year in 2011, which was our time, because it was a leap year, right? It would have had six days in their year as well. You with me? The exact date of the Ethiopian New Year can shift by one day, depending on whether the ending year is an Ethiopian leap year or not. When the year is not an Ethiopian leap year, guess when their new year falls on? What? 11th. Ethio yeah, y'all said they're like. <laughs> Are y'all listening? Is y'all paying attention? Ethiopian New Year will be on September 11. Why do you think the Twin Towers got hit on September 11? I told y'all, you go down the September 11 rabbit hole and it's a whole lot of crazy stuff that happens on that day. Because that is the original day it is said that Adam was created and Jesus. And Jesus, Adam was the second Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Or Jesus was the second Adam, <laughs> right? Yeah. 
See, y'all ain't even correcting me. I could be telling. I could be tell, I could be teaching you wrong. No, we knew you was. You you knew it, but you right. it was just a mistake you hey, made. Hey, thank you. <laughs> she knew it. We knew you had it. Yeah. No, I'm checking to see if y'all got it. I flipped it and you flipped it. Yeah, I'm waiting because ain't nobody said nothing. You know I do that sometimes. Y'all be paying attention, huh? Yeah. Okay, but when the when the ending year is Ethiopian leap year, when the year when the ending year has six days in Pagumi, the new year will be on September 12th. So 9/11 is the Ethiopian New Year, unless it is a leap year, huh? Here we go. From September 11th to December. 31st. The Ethiopian year is seven years behind the Gregorian calendar. Huh? And then the other thing, have you ever seen somebody from another country the way that they write their dates, they would normally put the day, day, month, month, year, year. So example, today is 12, 31, 2023. So they would write it 31 slash 12 slash 2023. Anybody ever seen that before? I remember when I seen it, I was so confused. I'm like, you missed, and he told me, oh, I, whatever country he was from, and I was like, Oh, I didn't know that. And he said, see, I'm the type of person, if I don't know something, I'm going to ask you. Mm -hmm. I ain't too proud to be like, I don't what do that mean. I want to know. Right. right? Here we go. So I need you to get the bigger picture that there has been a lot of manipulation. Do you understand that? A lot to go into keeping God's people lost and confused and the Romans did it, the Greeks did it, everybody who knew the real, true, living God has been real good at trying to shift his identity and how he came, uh, brought forth uh, 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 mankind, the whole plan. He, he's been trying to deceive us. Amen? Amen. So, Saints, in this particular scripture, Timothy is given warnings of what the last days are going to be like. And we need to take heed to his description of perilous times, saints. The word perilous means full of, involving peril. It's dangerous. Oh, y'all better, better be paying attention. It's going to be hazardous. It will be full of danger. Or full of risk high risk will you take a high risk of falling into danger huh of falling into the ways of mankind during this time Saints does any of these uh, des descriptive warnings sound like you a family member or a friend see the clock will strike midnight and when it strikes there will be no way to turn back the hands of time, is there? Absolutely not. The chance to undo or redo has already passed. The window of time has closed officially and the hands of time will begin to march forward. As they march forward, will time run out on you? Mm -hmm. Will you be one of God's favored who shall be protected during this savage and demonic time stamp in life? Seriously, are you going to be favored? Because it's going to be a demonic and savage time. We, we got, we've got many scriptures to show us what the end days are going to be like. Everything that I read as a description of what's going to happen, is it not happening today? We all agreed on that, right? Yeah. 
Paul gives Timothy a clear picture of what life will be like. This is what it is like. There's not one thing verse that I read in those verses that is not happening right now. Huh? The atmosphere of the last days will be desperately dangerous and demonic. Demons will oppress the majority of this earth and their fruit will closely match the descriptions that Apostle Paul is sharing with Timothy. I, 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 want, I want you to hear what I just said. Their fruit is going to reflect what Paul is telling Timothy. How many people that you know right now that are lovers of themselves, that they love money, that they are boasters. They're always talking about what they got, what they doing, how they getting money and doing things, going places. They're proud. Oh, I know, I know, I got it, I, I did it, I understand, I don't need your help. Blasphemers, rejecting God constantly rejecting what he's telling them to do. I'll do it when I'm ready to do it. Oh God, I got this going on. I got that going. I'm busy. You know my heart. God ain't hearing that excuse no more. He ain't listening to nobody. I, I know your heart. That's over. That's played out. Right? Disobedient to parents. How many people you know got children that are talking back to their parents? Even in church, I had a situation the other day. I'm thankful. You owe me this. They got this. You owe me this. You, my mama, you supposed to do this for me. Unloving. They don't do nothing because they love you. They do it because they expect you to do it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. They expect you to do something. It's, did y'all hear about the brothers and the sister that got killed Christmas Day? Yes. yes. They were jealous because they thought the yes. mama bought too many gifts for the other brother. And the sister got in the middle. And the younger brother shot the sister. And then the older, older brother shot him. That mama lost all three of her children that day. Over a fake holiday. Over greed, jealousy. Why? What was they like? Fourteen and fifteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fourteen, fourteen, and sixteen. He shot the sister because the sister was trying to get them to let it go. Mm -hmm. Drop the eleven-month-old baby. That goes to show how far we have rejected God. We're more concerned about going to get Christmas gifts than coming into the house of God. We are. This church should have been busting out at the seams last Sunday. God has been showing me I'm too real. I make people have to be accountable. They don't like it. You rub me the wrong way. Because you making me feel some kind of way about myself. Oh, well, you better be me than you standing before God. Oh, and God say, you going straight to hell. Okay. I don't got nothing to do with you. You ain't none of my child. I sent my prophet. I sent my apostle. I sent my pastor. And you kept making up excuses why you didn't want to do what you was told to do. You only did what, what you felt like doing. You didn't go above and beyond. You didn't go out your way to be obedient. You knew better and didn't do better. Yep. And you kept making excuses. God knows my heart. He knows. He knows I love him. No, you don't. And I'm not going to have that blood on my hands. Amen. You either going to do what he told you to do or you're going to have to answer for that. I'm not chasing you. Look, you've been at the pharmacy once. They gave you the instructions. Huh? Amen. You, you was given the warning. 
I, I got tired of being the bad guy, huh, Tanya? I told her, I said, I'm done. I ain't saying nothing. You like it? I love it. I'll be praying for you, but I'm not going to beg you to get right with God. Nobody should have to beg you. Right. If you can't make it up in your own heart, in your own mind, and be an example for your family, oh, well, I'm trying to worry about this person, and I want to make sure they are getting it. So you going to burn in hell because you're trying to control somebody else. you trying to control somebody else. And you know what God told you to do. I rest my case. You got folks that have no self-control. Pull out some wheat. Oh, yeah, let me get that. <laughs> what you got? Let me get some of that. Didn't you just come from church? Yeah, 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 but God know I'm working on it. <laughs> How many times are we going to use this excuse? I ain't trying to bust nobody out. And if it's stabbing you right now, praise the Lord. Amen. I'm not trying to condemn you. Huh? I'm not. So don't get it twisted. I'm just the messenger. Right? Would you want me to stand before God and I got 8,000 people that I didn't have to minister to and he'd be like, you missed five. Because you didn't want to hurt their feelings. That's right. Because you love them. So you didn't never say nothing. And because of them, the whole family lineage is now in hell. Come on, that part's on. You ever see one person change, and then before you know it, the whole household done changed? Yeah. You see one person come in the house with a bad attitude and watch how the domino affects the whole entire household. Am I right? So what you think you're doing? We're going to keep using that as an excuse? We're going to keep going to places where God said stay out of them? We're going to keep, well, I'm light and I, I can bring God with me. You ain't got no power. Come on. You ain't got no power. I don't see you laying out no demons on Saturday, Sunday. I don't see you casting them out. I don't see you speaking life and, and calling sick to health. But it's in you. It's on you. And then you got the fake ones trying to do stuff on the outside by themselves. You know, I don't want to do it in the church, but I'm going to go to work. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to go to the grocery store. I'm going to play that role. Because I want all the glory. All right, Jezebel, be careful. Be careful. Simon the sorcerer. You think you, you, think you ain't going to get checked? You don't play with God's gifts. You don't play with the anointing. And you don't be out of order. I don't care how anointed you think you are. I couldn't move until I had permission to leave the house I was under. Amen. And I didn't want to do it. I was angry. How dare you put somebody over me? I've been here seven, almost eight years, and you put somebody else over me? I'm the associate pastor. Title. God said, I got bigger things. I want you to have your own church. I don't want you to be no associate. Okay, man. So, me being humble and obedient, instead of going to try and do it on my own, being sneaky, right? Which would have fizzled out weeks, months, because I had no covering. You ever see somebody talking about, oh, I'm going to go start a church. And they leave the church, and a year later, they ain't even in church no more. They ain't even, they're not even. How many, of, how, many, how many of us have seen people that do that? What happened to the ministry? What happened to your walk with God? 
of what you were sitting. You were sitting in the house trying to lure people out of church. You were sitting there trying to get people to follow you, not God. Never once have I told you to follow me. You bet not follow me. You bet not. We got to wake up, y'all. The time is almost over. Literally. The time is almost over. And like I said, while I'm watching this big old grandiose uh, fireworks show, I'm thinking to myself, these people are sitting here celebrating and within weeks or months, they're going to be fighting for their lives. We're on the verge of World War III, people. And we acted like, I didn't get what I wanted for Christmas. <laughs> I told them what I wanted, them high thigh, high boots. <laughs> and he bought me the booties. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Y'all don't know like I know. And if you did, Yo, listen, there will be some whole yeah. lot of act right up in here. Yeah. Whole lot of act right. Apostle, what you need? What we need to do? What, do, what time? You think we should go down there? You think we should go over there? You think we should be doing this? You think we need to be on the watch? You said, wait, what, you know what that last message? Can, is it okay if we share that? If we can do that? Can we distribute that? Because this is what God is looking for. Faithfulness. He's looking for those that are getting ready to open his mouth, open their mouths, serving him, promoting his word. Not just sitting back, feed me. Give me some more. Yeah, more milk. Yeah. I'm kind of tired today. I'm just going to watch from home. That was created for people that are literally in other places. Yeah. States, cities. Yeah. Sick, hospital. Can't get physically here. It was not made for a tool. You know, a lot of churches have collapse because when the doors open back from COVID, they don't want to come to church. Right, right. Right. They watching at home and half the time they watch two, three seconds and ooh, let me go over here. Uh -huh. Let me give it what she say? Okay. <laughs> so did you hear the message last week? We talked all about you and your family. <laughs> huh? What you mean? And you sitting there like, wait, what? Don't got a clue. Don't got a clue. This is not to con this is not to condemn anybody. But let me tell you what happened. And, and, and I'm gonna hurry this up. Matthew, chapter eight. We gotta go. We gotta go. Matthew chapter eight. Verse. Let's see, let's see, let's see. 28. Two demon possessed men healed. When he had come to the other side, to the country of the Gerardine. Uh, wait. Oh, I can't even talk right. Gergesenes. Wait. I can't even say that right right now. Somebody say it. Gergesenes? Gergesenes? No. I didn't do it. My brain just had a blur. Gergesenes? Gergesenes. Gergesenes. Lord have mercy. What just Gergesenes. happened there? There met him two demon-possessed men coming out of the tombs. Are y'all listening? Mm -hmm. There met him two demon-possessed men. Do you understand we're about to start seeing demon-possessed people all over the streets? Oh, That's right. That's right. We already are. Coming out the tombs exceedingly fierce so that no one could pass that way. And suddenly they cried out saying, What have we to do with you, Jesus? You, son of God. You come here to torment us before the time? Now, these two demon-possessed men tortured anybody and everybody that came near there. Nobody could pass by. We also must pay very close attention that Paul 
did not in his text mention war, famine, or disease. Mm -hmm. He's talking strictly about how people are going to be behaving. Mm -hmm. Okay? It is going to be wicked and unholy behavior of mankind. Jews and Gentiles are going to try to destroy Christianity. There will be a great deal of damage that will be done to the church. Saints, what are we witnessing right now? Could you ever imagine Paul talking about Mark or Matthew to Timothy and tearing them down? And all that they had done the whole while they were with Jesus, building the discipleship up, all while claiming to be teaching God's word, and then turn around and tear them down. Oh, now that I'm with you, Timothy, I really didn't like Mark. Matter of fact, I think Mark was a drunk. And Matthew, you know, he was a thief. He was ripping them people off doing their taxes. You know that, right? So now, Timothy is forming an opinion about Mark and Matthew. He don't like them. Oh, well, they're really not men of God then, are they? You know, the things, seven things God hates, and the last one is just that. It's an abomination to him to make people turn against one another, right? So right now, what is happening? We got way too many internet ministries that are turning into gossip columns for the views, for the shares, for the subscribers. But all the while, they're tearing God's people down. That old thing with T.D. Jakes. As much as that man has done for the world. And now they're trying to destroy the very essence of him. Oh, but Billy Graham. Billy Graham was doing some real shady, shady stuff. He had been known to frequent the Bohemian Grove. And play some very nasty little games with children. But do you see them tearing him down like that? Mm -mm. Why do we destroy our own people? Where is the church? The real church. Amen. Praying for that man in his ministry. Praying for every tongue that opens a mouth against men of God, women of God. Next it'll be me. Next it'll be another church. Next, it'll be another ministry. Because this is what Satan does. Right. Take a clip of this and a clip of that. Oh, she, uh, me and Pastor Steph was talking about, oh, she says she used to be with witches. Oh, she says she used to do witchcraft. Oh, she is a witch. See? Put the clips together. You heard it out of her own mouth. And they run a clip. And people that don't know me, oh, she is a witch. She ain't no real woman of God. AI, demons, artificial intelligence. Who is the real intelligence? God, the Most High. Y'all understanding what I'm saying? Yes. All right. We got to stop battling with flesh issues. Huh? We need to start praying and stop trying to stone people. Huh? The Bible says, he without sin. Oh, Lord, I am way over my time. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> he without sin cast the first stone. No one is without blemish. Right. Okay? And we are, we are playing a major role for the devil. Huh? All of us having a form of godliness. But denying the power. Let that sink in. We promote evil, being corrupt and wicked, instead of being prayerful and righteous. Two members of the house of God can do more damage 
than 200 outsider non-believers. Amen. Do y'all understand that? Amen. Two believers in the house of God Amen. can bring a whole church down. Yeah, come on. The wicked loves money. They love the things of the world. And what they do is they will take what they know. And if they ain't 100% sold out for Jesus, right? And they still got this worldly stuff going on. And then they go into the homes of these gullible women. Girl, you can still drink. It's okay. God knows your heart. You can still smoke. You still with you still with old boy? Girl, just tell, just go for counseling. Just go tell the pastor, you and him, you know, shoot, y'all got y'all got a kid together. It's like you're married. <laughs> Am I lying? No. No. Not at all. But you want to know why your household is cursed? Why so much is going on? Why you all of a sudden got mental anguish and anxiety? Because you done sat up and had sex with nine different men. And you now carrying spiritually transmitted demons. Women, stop sleeping with men if he ain't your husband. Keep right. your legs closed. Right. Period. Amen. Man, you don't get away that easy either. Just as easy as she can get a demon, you can get a demon. You want to know why you can't sleep at night? Pornography. That's cheating on your wife. Lust. Looking at somebody else, you cheated on your wife. People don't understand that. This is not a joke. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Amen. And it ain't hard. Once you start letting God lead you, Amen. we look more like the world and less of the kingdom of God. Yeah. But we need to turn that around, y'all, because the countdown Come has on. begun. So many of us have lost our way as we tried to follow money and not Christ, thinking money will make you happy and solve all your problems. <coughs> it won't and it don't. Self-righteousness will outweigh humanity and humility. And many of us can and will be loaded down with sins and led away by various lusts. We're always talking about we're learning, we're going to church, but never able to come to the knowledge that I need to apply this to my life. Amen. That I need to start doing what the Bible says to do. Amen. I need to acknowledge the truth. When will we walk in the truth, saints? Huh? The countdown has begun. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, the countdown has begun. The countdown has begun. What Apostle Paul has shared with Timothy is upon us, saints. The time is upon us. What if we thought tonight at 12 a.m., if your very souls, right in God's eyes, was going to be snatched, and Satan was given the green light to enslave all of those who were really not in God's will. Would that concern you? Would it frighten you? Would it motivate you? Would it worry you? Or will you be like so many that are in the past? Janice and Jambres withstood Moses, resisting what God gave Moses to give his people, just like what I'm doing. Yet and still, many did not understand that the time was counting down and that their time 
was close to expiring. Look at your neighbor and say, set the alarm. Set the alarm. You bet not miss it. You bet not miss it. They didn't progress no further. They got stuck and they missed the alarm. We got folks that won't grow and won't go any further. Because the countdown is going to be over for them. And they had more than enough chances to understand. But they wouldn't take heed. They kept choosing to look at life as nothing is off limits. I have no boundaries. I have no rules. I can do what I want. I can live how I choose. I can live with whoever I want to live with. I have no one to answer to. Do whatever I choose when I choose to do it. Saints, just like the day of Moses, men will have fake power. They will use what they have to resist and to fool the people of God. There's a lot of us fooling God, or the people of God, not God. Fooling the people of God. You got a title. You got a title, but you ain't doing nothing that, that looks like your title. Nothing. Nothing. But God called you because he knows who you are. He called you. I didn't call you. He called you. Exodus, I'm closing with this. Exodus uh, uh, 7, 11. But Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. So the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For every man threw down his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. And Pharaoh's heart grew hard, and he did not heed them, as the Lord had said. Wow. 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 There's going to be some people around you that's going to have some faith. Parlor tricks. That's going to make you think they are who they say they are. We got them in churches all over this world right now. And then you're going to have some that are truly called by God like Moses was. And his rod ate up the magician's rod. Who are we going to follow? Who are we going to listen to? Who are we going to take heed and recognize what they are teaching you? What are they showing you? Do we just come to church just to get a word so we can feel good, so we can go back to do what we do? Or are we really coming to church so we can get some teaching and instruction on how to apply it to our lives? So we can be a blessing to our children and our grandchildren and our siblings and our friends and our co-workers and people we really love. Because we really have acknowledged that the lives we were living were horrid. We were broken. We were lost. Abused, traumatized, neglected, and now we've been found yes. and we are being loved on. And God has really embraced us. And so what do we do? Do we take this, sit on it? Or is this very hour going to lead you to end one old season and then begin a new season. Will you be ready to count down tonight? Count down your past? Count down the things of old? Count down your old ways, your stinking thinking? The slaves, huh? Wanted to hear the verdict of freedom. Do you understand that's how Watch Night started? They, want, they were set free, but the white folks did not want to let them go. So they went to the church 
and they wanted to hear it officially being announced that they were made free. And that's why they call it the watch night service. Mm. Okay. How many of you knew that? Yo, I'm going to whoop every last one of you been over here more than four years. You getting a spanking. Because I done told y'all this story. That goes to show people ain't listening. <laughs> right? We're not listening. It was the tradition. Huh? December 31st, 1862. Black Americans gathered in churches waiting for President Abraham Lincoln to sign the Emancipation Proclamation into law. They were all, the war was over. Isn't this amazing? They ended a war and we going into war. Right. Come on. Wow. Just like the day. Right? And that's what they were waiting on. Everybody in here of color, you should know this story. I remember when God told me to do a watch, I was like, oh, watch night. I don't just do things. How many young churches you know do a, a prayer shut in? They don't. Ain't nobody doing this stuff no more. If it ain't for kicks, giggles, and likes, click likes and shares, they're not doing it. They don't even hardly have an altar call. Right. So many do not really understand what we are really up against. Saints, let's pay close attention to the times we are in. And, I, and I'm closing with this. 12, 31, 23... One, two, three. One, two, three. Twelve slash thirty-one slash twenty-three. Amen. There's no coincidences. Nothing. The countdown has begun. Ask yourself, what will you do to prepare for the return of Jesus? Huh? Somebody needs to be shouting. What are you really ready to do? What are you really ready to denounce? What are you really ready to adopt? What are you ready to give up for Christ? Huh? Can the church uh, 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 get the house in order to receive our king? Can we get ready to worship him in spirit and truth? Because he is coming back. Anybody in here ready to denounce something that they've been up under? They've been trapped. They've been held captive. Huh? What have you been enslaved to? Ain't nobody gonna open their mouth. Speak. Speak. Huh? I rebuke the spirit of anger. I, res I rebuke the spirit of division in my family. Amen. Huh? What do you rebuke? What, what do you keep? Come on, Insecurity. speak it. Talk. Oh, what are you breaking off? Huh? Poverty. The spirit of disease. The spirit of insecurity. Huh? The spirit of division and divisive plans against the people of God. Speak, people. Or you gonna speak for yourself? Cause ain't nobody else gonna speak for you. Ain't nobody gonna speak for you. Break it. Break it. Break it. Tell God in your heart. But it would be better to speak it out loud. Cause see, when you speak things out loud, Satan is like, uh oh. He's serious. Uh oh. They ain't hiding it no more. Uh oh. They ready to expose this thing. Come on, y'all. Give God some praise.